Hello, how's it going? Today we're going to have a quick look at something that I've been repairing for a little bit here and there. Not all the time, it's just uh, been an ongoing project. Uh, I don't know whether you, you, you have similar things like this like for yourself, but uh, there are some slow burner repair kind of things that take like, oh, I don't know, a month at a time or something. You know, you're just flicking through it and you just cannot figure it out. And then after a while it starts working and then boom, it's done and it feels quite magical. I've got that feeling right now because I'm pretty happy with it. It was working yesterday. I've made it a little bit better today. And uh, I haven't even spoke about what the fudge it is. It's, it's behind us. But first off, I want to show you uh, for the formant. Um, this video is not on that yet. Uh, the next video on the formant will be on the RFM, which is a uh, free bandpass filters there in parallel. But also, Uva, who uh, posted over the blank power supply uh, board that he didn't need for his build, uh, well, it's blooming here. So yeah, we're definitely going with the original power supply for the formant. I think I've got every single part of it. Um, I just need to find a transformer that's got 240 volts input, 230 volts or whatever, uh, and then puts out 18 volt AC and 10 volt AC, I think it said. I'm gonna try and do it by the book, but try and spot as many bits as I can. I'm not sure what these connectors are, so that might be the one thing that I, uh, the bodge job, but we'll figure it out. But that's for another that's for another day. So look how nice the back of it is. It's really they're really cool. They've got a really noticeable uh, look to them. And I haven't actually seen uh, the power supply in the original kind of formant kind of color. Uh, all of the other ones I've seen haven't had um, silk screen on them. So this will this is gonna be cool. Anyway, let's have a look at this. The uh, loud speaking telephone number two A. Is that an A? Uh, <laughs> so this is a loud speaking telephone. It's from oh, the early 70s, maybe the late uh, 60s. I'll just double check. I've got a printout of the only kind of decent website that has spoken about it. It's a really good website after, about if you need documentation for some sort of phone or this, that and the other. I oh, know uh, it's from loud speaking telephone number two. Look at it. That's uh, that's that boy right there. That's uh, that's the boy. That's the lad. Um, 1973 it says, but uh, oh no, the marketing installation from 1973. However, I've seen that before. It was called the loud speaking telephone. Um, was it in here or was it somewhere else? It was actually uh, called something else by GEC, and uh, that was in 19. 60, uh, 1959, there we go. Additional information, uh, originally called the telephone number 1000L, 1000L by G -A G -E -C, uh Pan Master Numbers, uh, introduced in October 1959. Interesting because, yeah, well, it's quite interesting because this is actually an early transistor machine. Uh, it's got some germanium transistors in there pretty funky we'll have a look at that but uh yeah uh this video if you you know if you're not interested in this kind of malarkey definitely look away now because it may be extremely boring but if not then hold on to your horses because we're going to have a chat about this stuff um <clears throat> the other thing i do about these is um I, I like to uh, just basically document my uh, journey for a if I want to look back because I'm rubbish at writing things down, or B, if anybody else has got exactly the same journey and they find themselves with one of these, well, here we go. So the first problem that I had with this thing uh, was uh, I didn't know how to fudge to wire it in. Um, for starters, it, it was uh, originally, it was actually uh, bolted to this, this was coming out the back of it. Um, yeah. Uh, there was loads of wires, loads of cables, so many cables, it was unreal. And they all connected to the back. Oh, it's all a bit, actually, uh, they all connected to, oh, it's all a little bit ropey. Um, this turret board right here. So, and they were all higgledy-piggledy. There was no real rhyme or reason. So there was no chance that I was able to wing it without documentation, basically, because, yeah, like, um, that looks a little bit more than just a phone line and a power supply, basically, doesn't it? I mean, I put the heat shrinks on uh, at one point. But um, where was it? Well, on this website as well, this website, which is a really good, loud, uh, I think it's just telephone, britishtelephones.com or something like that. Well, there was the schematics. Um, yeah, please uh, have a look at these on the website. The link will be below because they're really faint and it's actually quite hard to uh, make them out, especially on a video. No, look at that, try and make that out. Yeah, definitely uh, have a look at it now. 
and uh, maybe you can follow along whilst you're looking at it if you if you are interested. So. Um, this was the first uh, schematic, so this is of the whole thing, and uh, it takes a little while to get your head around what all of the boxes do. But then there's also this uh, page, which uh, actually has this, which is called a junction box. And this initially confused me because I only got this box, basically. This is um, what I got with the telephone. However, uh, when it was actually used and all of the installation kind of instructions and stuff we're talking about this thing it's a bot it's a little circuit that uh, is not in the phone it's actually on the end of uh, the junction box it's I think it's called yeah junction thingamajiggy I think they actually call it technically the yeah the thingamajiggy junction and all of the terminology was talking about that thing and how to wire that thing into the phone line but lo and behold I didn't have that I only had the wire that was going to it so oh oh my god Ooh. So I've managed to boil it down after um, looking at this schematic. Uh, this is actually that junction box I found out. This is the schematic for that junction box. So luckily it isn't actually that involved. If you look on there, you can see it. Is it getting in focus? You can see there's what, like maximum there's four resistors and a capacitor, uh, yeah? And also if you look at this, yeah, you'll see that um, it's not, not that much. Uh, so this thing can be powered by either 50 volts, 6 volts, or something in between, i.e. 26 volts or something, I think it's been mentioned. So the first thing was doing was working out what to power it with. So I figured I should just jump straight in and power it with 6 volts, a 6 volt power supply. Originally it was powered by 6 volts, originally by a battery. So the 6 volt option is for when you've got a battery, um, because yeah, having a 6 volt power supply back in this time yeah, I don't know. So, um, yeah, I had to figure out how to power it. So, um, having a look at this, I'm just going to say this now for people, uh, for anybody who's found uh, one of these and wants to wire it in, well, this is how you can simply do it. Okay, okay, let's have a look at this first. So, um, oh, oh, get it standing up on end. Uh, uh. Come on, zoom in. Zoom, 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 zoom. Uh, where's the screwdriver? So uh, this is one, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. They've all got numbers on them. Uh, what I found out is number three and four is the telephone line. So you just wire the telephone line into there. Can't remember which one's which. So uh, yeah, I got those wires going to the telephone line. And then number five, number six is minus six volts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then number seven actually wires together to number 15, and I can't remember why now. Let's have a look at the schematic again. Uh, so this section right here is all of the wires that connect from the junction box over to this phone, and it's really faint and it's impossible to figure out. Oh yeah, for some reason this connection, I don't even know where it's required, I think it is. So number seven connects straight to number 14, and in the schematic, all these, two, all these wires are doing it, going to the junction box, I'm coming back out again. <laughs> I know. So it comes out of seven. Uh, so seven and 14, I just, instead of wiring it through, well, the bypass on the junction box, I just wired them together there. So that's, um, yeah, 14 and seven. And then also 11 and um, 18, 11 and 18, reason being is if you follow 11 and 18, you're probably not going to make this out, but we'll try. Uh, so number 11, God, this is a really dodgy printout. Um, 11 uh, is actually here. Sorry, I made a mistake. It's 10, not 11, 10. So 10 comes here, it goes out, and then it goes down through all of this malarkey. And luckily, with uh, 6 volts, you bypass all of these. this. So you could just, you go down, boop, 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 and then you follow it along, and it actually just connects to 18. So because we're on 6 volts, we just bypass all of the circuitry on the junction box, so 10 to 18, that connects together. So 10 and 18. So if you found one of these, wire um, 14 and 7 together and 18 and 10 together, and then wire uh, minus 6 volts, which is, I'll talk about that in a second, which is uh, wire to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then you wire ground uh, to um, 21. Yeah, so it's up there. Uh, the, you can see it on the schematic. If you look at the schematic, you know, can actually decipher, yeah, it's ground 
21, impossible to see anything. There's also a big chunky capacitor on this junction box. So what I did was I've actually put a capacitor around the back there. It does actually help with the noise. Uh, we'll find out in a sec. So how did I get minus six volts from a standard wall warp power supply? So this is the uh, wall warp power supply that I'm using. Oh, just a normal six volt wall warp power supply. And all I did was uh, wired it backwards. So the minus six volts ends up being the uh, ground, the ground, the earth of the um, that. So it's the, um, the one that comes up with zero. And then you wire the six volts, the plus six volts to the ground. So it's kind of pushes it downwards. It makes that the actual, uh, the six volts coming out of here is ground and then the minus six volts is the ground of that. I know it's a head fudge, but if that, hopefully that makes sense. So just wire it in backwards if you found one of these. Yeah, 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 thumbs up, thumbs up. Right, okay. Now with that out of the way, let's have a look at what else happened. So finally, after figuring out how to plug it in, I'm pretty sure I managed to plug it in right, even though it wasn't working, it was a case of figuring out how to fudge to make it work. I was in problem town because it wasn't working. It wasn't working and it was driving me up the wall. I was like, why don't you work? Why don't you work? Uh, so we'll have a look, move this board out of the way. So actually, before we do that, have a look at the back. Um, you can see there's the speaker. Uh, microphone is behind here. It's glued together. It's, I've tried pulling it out a little bit, but it's just not coming out without damaging it. But there's a microphone in there. One day, hopefully I'll get to see it. I think it might be a carbon something or other. Um, might not even be, I'm not sure. But there's a microphone in there. It's reasonably rubbish. We'll talk about that later. There's uh, relays. Ooh, ooh, funky. And uh, that is about it. And then there's this big connector right there. This connector in here. Uh, and that connects over to this rather chunky, double-sided, 1959 design, apparently. 19, uh, late 50s, apparently, by the, by the name change description. Uh, this. This is a double-sided circuit board, but it's not a normal, you know, double-sided circuit board like you think about it. It's actually two circuit boards glued together. Like they're, well, they might not even be glued together. They might just be put together and then screwed. Oh yeah, I think they might even be screwed together. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they are glued. But yeah, you'll see there's one circuit board on the back, one circuit board on the front. That is a chunky circuit board, but that's double-sided. So um, if we have a look at here, you could see all of the little, um, I think they're PNP germanium transistors. Uh, I can't remember exactly which ones they were. I had one, I took one off because I thought it was broken. I actually put it back in. I think it's the GEC, oh, what was it? It'll be on the screen right now because I'll have searched it. I found it. So initially I was a bit stumped why not, it wasn't working at all. So the first thing I did was one by one, I started replacing the capacitors just hoping for life. And as you can see, a lot of all of these black ones, uh, the ones that I've replaced. And uh, as you can see, this is what they were. All of these, all of these chunkies. Uh, so I ended up replacing pretty much every single electrolytic capacitor on, on the board near enough. And I managed to get the speaker working. But lo and behold, the microphone was nowhere to be heard or seen. It wasn't working at all. So I spent ages basically looking through the schematic, which is absolutely useless to look at on a camera because it's so damn faint and blurry. Have a look on the website if you want to take a closer look. But you'll notice that um, if you have a look, uh, this part is the microphone circuit. I know it's faint as fudge. Speaker circuit. And then there's a switching circuit, which sort of acts like a side chain. So that means when you speak or make noise through the microphone, it actually turns the speaker down, which I think um, helps with feedback and stuff because it doesn't feed back much at all but it's quite flawed in a weird way. It's a, it's a weird one. Um, so what I did was I had a look around the board. Uh, I was testing things and I actually tested over on this uh, 1K circuit, a 1K resistor. I was supposed to be getting the six volt power, but and this was the first resistor that was actually powering all of the transistors in the microphone stage. So this was after a couple of evenings of just being like, why won't you work? So I was like, why isn't that getting it? That's literally connected. And lo and behold, you have a look around the back and you can see, oh, where's my screwdriver? You can see this right here, this blob right here that I've put. Well, oh, get in focus. Well, that was a cracked um, trace. You can see there's actually cracking around this screw. Well, that crack managed to break this trace. Second I put that blob on, boom, it comes to life. 
So uh, that is the transistor, that's the microphone working. So lo and behold, the microphone might have been working with or without the new capacitors. After that, uh, because I actually took one of the germanium transistors out and swapped it with another PMP transistor, uh, I ended up putting it back. I think it was this one right here. Um, after that, uh, yeah, it worked. I took, I replaced, put that back together and we have life. And inadvertently, uh, I've managed to recap the whole thing because, uh, yeah, because I needed to. Well, I didn't need to. So that's, that's that. And um, it's got this beautiful uh, junction. Uh, we'll have a go of it in a second because why not? So initially, uh, this was going to be for the toilet, but I'm starting to go off the idea of having a toilet phone now. The idea of just people with a wee all over their hands or something, or like somebody has a bit of an accident and then they get poo all over it. That's not what you want. It's not what you want. So this is going to go somewhere else. I've got to find somewhere else quiet for this one because it's not very good in a loud situation. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. So um, we're going to test it now. So we've got the power supply wired in. We've got a telephone line. The telephone line's going up and over to a, a phone line that I've wired in for the to test this. It's right there, my finger's dangling. And I'm going to call up some things. Let's have a listen to the... Um, to it first. Well, actually, no, no, no. First, I'm going to show you some of its funky, funky features, and then we'll um, get on to testing it because I'm going to put it back in its uh, case for the test. Okay, okay. So let's. Oh, oh, dip, oh, dip up, up, oh, up. There we, there we go. Hey. Zoom it back. Oh, 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 beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So, um, look. Oh. Another problem that it had was the bulb wasn't working, so the lovely tool like this, plonk it in there, push it in. So just replace the bulb, it's a six volt bulb. Oh, might have put that in a bit far, whatever. Uh, so now let's uh, turn it on uh, and we can see what the fudge is doing. I'm not sure whether it's gonna, is it wrong? Is it connected? Yeah, I think it is. I'm gonna put the uh, my speaker a little bit closer. So we're gonna push this button. This is the button that you initiate the phone call and move it out. There is a handset on the side, but that's that's a bit, I think the word superfluous. Is that a word? Oh, I'll show you the, how that functions in a sec. So we push this down. We get the phone. So, um, yeah, one sec. I'm gonna call another phone and then I'll answer it. Um, I've gotta remember the phone numbers now. Six. Oh. Oh yeah, by the way, I added some WD-40 onto this. It's so smooth. So smooth! Also... Don't know where you can hear that. Right, nine. Hello, how's it going? Is everything all right in there? Yeah! I hope it works. I don't know how loud it is right now. Uh, ooh, ooh, can you hear it? Can you hear it? Increase the volume as well. It's like I can't hear you. Uh, but first, let's um, let's hang up. Let's call again. Let's call Techmoan just to give it a good old test. Code as shown in your phone book. There will be no extra charge for the call. If further assistance is required, please ring operator services. Lovely jubbly. So that works. Uh, we're all happy there. Um, actually, I'm going to pick up the phone. I'm going to show you um, how uh, it switches over to this telephone. One sec. So we lift up this and it turns this off uh, via a relay, actually. So um, if you have a look up here. So you push it down, that initiates. And when you lift this up, that relay flicks over and it changes the signal over to the actual handset. And this can work without being powered, it literally just bypasses the whole powered circuit. 
Right, so before we test the microphone, let's put this back together uh, because, yeah, uh, I haven't actually put it back in its case. It's uh, been chilling out all happy days and, um, yeah, it'll be good to uh, pop it back. Pop it back in its uh, lovely case. So how do we do that? Well, we've got to take the handset off first. And then we uh, flick this off. I can't remember how to do it. And then we clip this off. We, there come, you're coming with me for a second. Now that means we can squeeze, we can slide this in. Let's unplug the, uh, the, bur the circuit board first. Oh, pop you over here. And then uh, let's uh, move this over here, like so. Go and get this beautiful case. Oh, oh, can you get that? Is that in shot? It's a little bit. And then slide you in. The case is a little bit be beaten and battered. Beaten and battered. Battered and beaten. Oh no, this is hard to do on a camera. Oh, it's going, I thought it was going too far forwards then. Oop, the uh, lens fell off. Now we got to get it screwed back in. Here we go, there's one. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, there is a bit of a calibration process to this, but uh, what are you going to do? It's fine. And then, oh, get the back of it on. Oh, oh, get the, get that going right. A oh, little bit of uh, wood veneer. Oh my gosh, that's a lovely veneer, don't you say? Oh yeah. Do -ba -do -ba -do -ba -do. Hopefully I'm going to be able to get, I've just forgotten to put the, uh, the hook on. So uh, I should probably do that before I finish tightening this up. Just to double check I can actually do it. Without seeing. Oh no. Oh. oh right, we've got to get it back off again. Oh. Um, oh, the bell is like a buzzer. Oh, oh. Come on. Ah, there we go. I couldn't, uh, it was impossible to put that on actually. So there's a little nice clip. So it's actually impossible to get off unless you push it down from the inside. So that's, that's really smart. Right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna call this and then you're gonna look really closely at this. Right, let's get that answered and test out the microphone, shall we? Turn it off. Turn it off for now. 